everybody, welcome to The Wild Dog Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a look inside of our brand new and the first of its kind, a novel unit study for A Christmas Carol. Now, it is not Christmas here for us without Ebenezer Scrooge and his three spirits. It is a book or a story that we have been reading aloud since as long as I can remember, whether that was in picture book form when Emily was younger, or me reading this aloud over the past three or four years, or this year reading it and deep diving with a novel unit study, which I'm so excited about because it is just a time honored tradition in our family. So really being able to deep dive and make it a family learning affair is going to be so much fun. Now, any book that is a Christmas Carol that is the original text will work for this novel unit study. You could technically use one of the picture books for it. You're not going to be able to use to do all of the comprehension because all of the comprehension questions are going to be based off of something that is the original text, whether that is this copy, which by the way is like $3.99 on Amazon, or whether that is one of the maybe nicer illustrated editions, which this is what I'm going to read from this year because it's absolutely beautiful. But as long as the actual text within it is the original text, one that has the five staves, it will work with this novel unit study. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look inside so you can see everything that is included when you get this unit study for A Christmas Carol. The first thing we have is kind of an introduction page. This is a little bit of what's included, how it's going to work, and kind of my heart behind it. And then every stave, which there's five of, has a very similar setup. So they're all going to include copy work of some kind. They're all going to include vocabulary work of some kind. Now the activities are going to vary from stave to stave, but there's going to be one for every stave as well as an answer key for that so that you don't have to try to remember it all. There's going to be comprehension for every stave. Some of them are going to be fill in the blank. Some will be multiple choice. Some will be short answer. They're going to vary from stave to stave as well, but there will be comprehension for each and every one with answer keys. There's going to be a summary for each stave. They're going to get to draw a picture of something that they think represented that stave and answer a few short questions about it to kind of summarize what they've read or what's been read to them. And then there's going to be creative writing for each stave. The creative writing project or um, suggested project is going to be in relation to that stave in some kind. So like stave one, they're going to pretend to be Scrooge and write a diary entry right after they have seen or met Jacob Marley. So it will be in relation to that. Then, like I said, every stave repeats in a very similar fashion. The activities just change a little. Then once you get through all five staves, we have some figurative language activities. Now, Christmas Carol is full of rich figurative language. So I really wanted the kids to be able to explore that and learn more about it and kind of why we include it in really great writing. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to talk about why it's included in great writing. We're going to give examples of the different types of figurative language, the definitions of them and how they can be used. Then they're going to go search a Christmas Carol and find a few examples for themselves. The last thing they're going to do is going to be a hands-on language activity where they're going to kind of do this game type of thing with figurative language from the book. So in the figurative language hands-on activity, we are basically going to be analyzing sentences from the text and trying to decide whether they are a metaphor, a simile, an onomatopoeia, an illusion, a hyperbole, a pun, an idiom, or a personification, what they're an example of. And each of these cards has the definition on it so that the kids don't have to try to have it memorized or remember they can have it to reference. So they'll pick one of 20 cards here and they will look at the underlined part and try to figure out what that is. So in this instance, it's a metaphor. Yeah, metaphor. And this one is a simile. That's another simile. That one's an onomatopoeia. That one is personification, idiom, 
upon, anyway, you get the idea. So they're gonna just do all of them like that. And there is an answer key included so you don't have to try to know yourself which each one of these is. We also have a Christmas Carol crossword puzzle. So this is gonna kind of be a review of the entire book at this point. There's an answer key for that as well. Then we have a project where they get to design their own book cover. So they're gonna reimagine the book cover for A Christmas Carol. And then we have elements of a story. So there's gonna be multiple different things here that have to do with elements of a story so that we can really dig into what it takes to create a great story like A Christmas Carol. So we have story setting, identifying the theme, plotting the story, character analysis, which they get to pick their favorite character for. It doesn't have to specifically be any character. Persuasive writing book review, which this is going to be so much fun. They get to try to persuade a friend whether they should read or not read the book. Book and movie comparison, which this will work with any of the Christmas Carol movies. So you can pick the one your family loves most, or you can pick whichever one you think is most appropriate, depending on the age of your child. And then we have cross curricular connections. So this is going to be a list of a lot of different ideas of how you can use a Christmas Carol in your homeschool and incorporate math, writing, social studies, science, art, and music. So we're really going to dig into making it kind of an all encompassing unit study.